Good morning, folks. Grown Black Folks Talk. Uh, out early. Got a couple reasons. It's getting. Uh, San Francisco usually does not get really warm until September, but owing to the climate appearing to be changing. That kind of heat is now coming to August, which means I will be uh, generally getting out earlier, but that's good because there's less wind. I record a whole video. I said less. I didn't say there wouldn't be any. I recorded an entire video yesterday and got back, listened to it, realized, no, there's too much wind blowing through the quality. But this is good because that means I get to do a weekend epiphanies together. The two ideas really do go together. Now, yesterday, I've really been, let me just say, shout out to Mocha Mommy. I've really been processing black women and social anxiety a lot. But also, yesterday was one of those Fridays. Um, and the Holy Spirit told me in advance, so I didn't have to be mad, and so that I could be taught by the experience. Uh, it's Friday. Yesterday. It was Friday. It was Friday. And a bunch of people from a, different, a bunch of different places have this idea that Thursday night, Friday, all the stuff that they couldn't solve during the week somehow finds its way to me between Thursday night and Friday afternoon. Because people are trying to make sure that they can get it off their minds so they can enjoy their weekend. They don't always think about, if I put all this on Ms. D, is she going to be able to wind out her Friday and enjoy her weekend? Every year, I have to educate folks why you don't do that. So if you conceive the work week is 40 hours, 60 hours, or even 80 hours, I have to let people know that if you let it wait for 35 hours, 37 and a half, and then do whatever numbers you do for uh, 60 and 80, then it might just wait until Monday because I'm not going to get in the habit of always doing this for so I'm going to have to let some folk know on Monday. But instead of being as frustrated by it as I have been in past years, I sat back and I thought to myself, now wait a minute. Epiphany number one. I do not have to solve everything right now or ever. And that is okay. Specifically, I did what was necessary to make sure certain people could hit the ground running and then left it alone because people were still 4.30 on Friday asking for information that other people should have provided me. And I'm like, no, I saw it at 5.50. I'm like, no, I may do an email about that Saturday morning um, after I've had my walk and got what I need to get done today. But I'm not giving that any more attention because everybody knows in a 9 to 5 world what time to get off of work. And see, when you get to the point that you're not having to live a 9 to 5 life, and you have money coming in to do things you want to do, people feel entitled to that time. And people also feel entitled to black women solving their problems. So whatever time you have really does not matter. But there's a little added element of, you know, Deanne kind of keeps, you know, used to work swing. So she's probably still up or hasn't left the computer or blah, 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 blah. And that is a personal problem and not for you. In the rest of your life, you do not have to solve everything right now or ever, and that is okay. There are 47 million black people in the United States of America. We go on and on about the problems, men, women, family. There are many more problems, but you can't get that solved. Nobody can. Here's the thing. You know what the problems in the black community are going to end? When all 47, a significant number of 47 million decide they needed to end and either take the lead or follow those who are leading. That's when that's going to end for 47 million people. That's it. You are not responsible for every, solving every problem of everybody around you. It is enough for you to solve what you need to solve, not to be caught, kept caught up. Shout out to True Mystique, who just pointed CEO Drive Her. I mentioned that when I did my video about the PPP loans. The madness is starting, including people losing their housing. Um, it's going to be enough for you to get your life together. It's going to be enough for you to get your family's life together if you they will listen to you. You do not have to solve every problem right now, and maybe not ever, and that's okay. Now, I'm not preaching individualism. 
which is you do what you want to do and the feelings and the needs of others don't matter. I'm very much a person who believes in responsibility for the community to a limited extent, but still believes in that. The reason that people call me to pull the fat out of the fire, you know, some afternoon now on Friday, is because I'm pretty good at doing that. I carry a lot of responsibility. But there's what you're called to carry, and then that's what everybody else will show up and pile on your desk if you let them. But if it's Friday, and it's 12.48, or 4.35, people had all week to solve this problem. So if they didn't get it done in the previous 37.5 hours, 35 hours, that ain't on you. That's on you. And in life, be careful with problems you take on because those are not your responsibility. People will make it so, but unless you sign up for it yourself, willingly, that's not your problem. Which brings me to Epiphany too. As I said, I've really been processing vocal mommies, black women, and social anxiety about how you have to be honest with yourself about a lot of us are talking about working on ourselves, but that process is endless and we really have to be honest about what's holding us back from getting out there and meeting people. And I realized we all grew up the word of Disney and the word of fairy tales is taking more press preference in our lives than the word of God. Now, if you're not a Christian, just stay here for just a minute. The word of Disney and the fairy tales tells you that it's a princess's job to kiss a frog. It is not. I do not have time to kiss frogs. And the expectation that I should is a level of male entitlement we need to talk about. To take this on a general level, just for a minute. So, you're dealing with men who recognize that for whatever reason, they fall into very low state. And oftentimes, it's a prince put under a curse, usually by another more powerful woman. You know, you hear black men talk about what their moms didn't do and all the rest, this often happens. Even in most of the fairy tales, it's an evil woman, an evil stepmother. It's always the mother's fault that something's going wrong. And you have to ask, where are all these absent fathers? If you're a prince, where is the king, your father? If you're a princess in trouble, where is the king, your father? Ever notice how even in the fairy tales, powerful men are absent from these stories and someone else has to come in and rescue them? But when you get to the woman kissing the frog and beauty is kissing the beast, you really get to a situation that is dangerous. Because remember, remember, once upon a time in Genesis 1, God made heaven and earth and man. He gave man the primary responsibility of taking care of his creation, including himself and the woman. He gave him. But when the man decided he wanted to be like God, failed. Who did he put the responsibility on? He blamed Eve for the whole thing. Instead of coming to the king, his father, Father God, and making it right with him and admitting, yeah, I sinned, I, yeah, I messed up, I did what you told me not to do, and I'm sorry. He threw it all back on Eve. So suddenly, when women are being programmed by the stories that they tell, by the word of Disney, and by the word of older fairy tales, that it's their job to fix some man, that's still the culture of men suddenly saying, okay, we're still not interested in having God fix us up. We're still not interested in making connections with strong men who hold us accountable. We want you to get in the spot. And Tony Gaskin said something yesterday that also was very telling. He said men want to make women their God and get their healing from her when that's not what you're supposed to do. I'm gonna go one step further with this. Men, want to make women their God because but you also notice that men don't listen to women like that you can tell and this is going to show up in our Bible study summer Bible study shameless plug next week John 4 uh, the woman at the well we find out in John 4 42 that these men have to let it be known that they ain't really hearing her like that but so a man wants a woman that he can worship and adore but not that he can be held accountable to. And that's how men make idols around the world. They have gods that will meet their needs, but gods who have not the power to hold them accountable to anything. So if it's your job to kiss the beast and make him better, 
and it's your job to kiss the frog and restore him to the prince and another woman has put him in that state. You're being put in a position you weren't designed to be in. You're not a goddess. You're just a woman. Proof. Proof. Stop getting old. Stop having wrinkles and go solve COVID if I'm lying. You're just a woman. And there is a protection and a grace that comes to your life when you stop believing the lies about who you are. I'm not called to kiss frogs. I'm not called to kiss frogs. And when I realized that, it freed me from my social anxiety about meeting people. All I gotta do is hear the ribbit and feel the swamp easing off someone who considers himself as a frog who needs to be kissed, and I'm good. This is basically why I've been, and now I realize why I've been saying, because instinctively I've always known this. The men around me were princes and kings. My dad, definitely a king, the individual. Uh, most of my uncles and both my grandfathers. I knew one quite late in life, a very a, a older, sad king. The other one I never met, but I know him through my mom and my grandmother's stories. Kings, most of my uncles, and of course, most of the men that I've dealt with after that model have been at least princely. Maybe not perfect, but they haven't come to me with the demand that I fix them up. Because let me tell you something. So, you're going to get some swamp creature. And you're going to be kissing swamp creatures. You know the swamp has HIV, HPV, and now monkey pox in it. Is this what we're doing in 2022, ladies? Remember what I said about a pivotal one. You cannot solve everything right now or ever, and that is okay. You cannot solve some man. He needs to go to Father God and be working on his issues. And he needs to have men around him who will hold him accountable. And if he does not have those two things, I don't care how cute he is, I don't care how good he looks. Notice that I have not said anything about his income or anything else because a man like that is going to be a, going to be appropriate. Um, now, while you're waiting on him, you need to be doing this for yourself. You need to know what's appropriate. American consumerism is not an appropriate way to base a relationship. It is not. We have several thousand years of human history to show that, but also, how's it working for us? It's not. Divorce rates, 50%. One more thing about not kissing frogs. Which would you rather have? If you're growing, healing, and in right relationship with God and with women who hold you accountable. Would you rather have a man who can step into your life from the side? Now, it depends on how you want to look at this. Someone who can come alongside you and add his strength to yours as you tack uphill in this society? Or if you are more of a conservative bent, have him out in front providing a windbreak so your way is not so hard? Or did you want a frog you had to carry? Did you want a man who at any time, because he just came from being a frog, can return to his froggy ways on you? Who wants to worship you when you're making him feel good, but then is going to revert to Adam at his worst moment recorded after eating that fruit and put the load back on you? Did you want to pick up a burden of a frog? Or did you want to hold out for a prince becoming a king? Or, depending on how old you are, because I'm 41 now. Um, at this point, I need something of a late stage prince who's about to step on up at worst. And I realized, okay, well, now that I understand it, thank you, Mocha Mommy, for providing me the train of thought. I'm going to put that in the description again. But understand, I will not be dating to find frogs to kiss. Adam had a job and was shown the the work ropes and shown that he needed his mate just like God made everything else male and female but did not do this for Adam because that was going to be important later because he was going to spend the rest of his life going back and forth between knowing that he needed Eve and loving her and going back to blaming her for the fall because those are two things that happened in Genesis 2 and 3 but because God had already shown him how he needed her in 930 years because they raised that godly son they raised two godly sons, Abel, and then after Abel was killed by their ungodly son, Cain, who was the oldest, Seth. So they raised a godly son later on. 
So from that, we can assume that Adam and Eve worked it out with God and worked it out with each other before Adam's death at 930 years old. Abraham had to prove to his father that he was ready for marriage. And he also had to prove it to Sarah's father, but if you read the record carefully, it was early in human history and the world was being repopulated after the flood. So uh, Abraham's father, Sarah's father, was exactly the same person. Abraham married his half-sister. And so, <laughs> obviously he had, to prove, he had to prove that. But you know, you read the story of Abraham, this is a good man who took 300 men, because he was blessed by the Lord to do it, and whipped the baddest king in Mesopotamia in order to rescue his nephew. So he didn't just see his life as what he was doing, but also concerned for those who placed themselves under his protection. He had resources and the ability to do this, and God, of course, blessed him. Uh, Cato Laomer, y'all don't remember him, but he was the baddest king in Mesopotamia. Abraham whipped him with 300 men. He had some skills. He became the richest man in the East, and all that happened before Isaac was even born. All that happened before Ishmael was even born, for that matter. The man has skills, and he had to at least have a certain amount of skills before he moves out, when God calls him. He's not a fully formed man. Life was really long then, but at least the skills are there. Boaz had a field that Ruth could come work in and show her virtue, but she was just doing what she was doing, and eventually. It's one of the very few times in the Bible a woman lets a man know, but it's a special situation. And by bringing her into his life, Boaz became even richer, if you follow the story, uh, because she had been married to a man who had died, but through whom she had some inheritance rights. So she was proven that, yeah, uh, she was a hard working woman. She did what she was supposed to do under the law to care for her mother-in-law. And he saw that and stepped up. Okay, uh, so far, no frog kissing. Um, if we were to continue to go down through history, there's nowhere that God said, find a man. There is one case where God told a man, I want you to marry a woman who's going to be unfaithful because I want you to demonstrate how it's going to be between me and Israel, Hosea. But there is never a time that a woman is instructed to go pick up some man who doesn't have his life together. And in fact, in those days, her father would not have permitted it. You had to prove to her father that you were a worthy man to be a husband. Well, we live in the United States of America, and everybody's not bringing, everybody doesn't have a dad to bring their uh, mate home to. But what I suggest you do, if, if you're a Christian, is make that man prove himself to Father God. Now, who a whole other video on, if you really know how to have a conversation with someone, you can spot red flags usually from the first conversation. There are people that I consider my friends that I would never date. I would never consider as partners at the state that they're in. Now, if they grow a little bit, maybe. But right now, nope, can't do it. Absolutely not. I'm not suited for that. And in one conversation. And the thing is, I can have cordial conversations with men that I never intend to talk to again, or that I might talk to again under different circumstances, but it ain't gonna go nowhere. I already know that's not for me. I do not kiss men even still wrestling with highly froggy ways. No. I don't have to. I trust in God, who is the one who is responsible for solving all problems that he chooses to solve, and who did not put me or any other woman here to lift the curse off of some man. If men want the curses they feel they are under to be lifted off of them, they need to go to the king, their father, Father God, and have do as he says to have this done, and then seek a woman who has done the same. And that is how those problems will be solved. You and I, we do not have to solve everything today. Right now, forever, that is okay. Because God is still at And that means we don't have to solve some man. We were not put here to kiss frogs. Two weekend epiphanies. I hope it frees some of you to enjoy your day. Definitely help me. Like I said, I can be the man on the street and talk and be like, nope, nope, there's some froggishness. Now, I know some men are like, you don't give a man a chance. Okay, there, but there are certain standards. I'm not talking about preferences. Notice I did not say men come in, uh, men come in all colors. And you're also some frogs in all colors. Um, 
there are some beasts in all colors. Um, so that's not a reference to that. It's about do you manifest the characteristics in just casual conversation that I need in my life of peace and productivity. I put peace first. But we all living in a capitalist society. There must be productivity of some kind. Uh, we're not retirement age yet. Got to have those two things. But I can know what a man is on pretty quick. Because, pretty quick. And then you talk to the Spirit of God. Father God, is that it? Nope. Okay. I'd still be there, be cordial. But no, I don't have to give anybody a second chance. If you have red flags that alert me, this ain't going to work. No, I don't have to give you a second chance. We can be done right now. Get into that mindset, ladies. You only need one man. Don't kiss frogs and beasts trying to find him with no other man around to give this person guidance, with no allegiance to God to give this person guidance. Leave them right where they are. Because that's not a problem you have to solve. Did you want a man or did you want another burden, another problem to solve? Got to make up your mind. And then, of course, listen to Mocha Mommy's video. And then if you want to, if you're ready, get back out there. All right. Y'all have a good day now. Goodbye.